Um, and our and our amazing producer here is like, 10 seconds, three seconds, and I'm like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> so we just had a little set change uh, because uh, Kevin was having a hard, the chair was too bulky. So I just was telling. These chairs are great, right, Kevin? Yeah, they're wonderful. I was I telling mean, not as comfortable, but. our Facebook live audience that, you know, we're still all kind of getting to know each other and we're kind of getting in our groove and we're kind of getting this. our system just, down. Just move back a little bit. Sorry. Just see if it. Oh my god. Is it my stuck on, it's like, oh. on the wire? Oh, here we go. Oh, Whoa. Shit. Keep going. Pull. Sorry. Pull. Wait. Just pull on. your chair. There okay. we go. Okay. Oh. Woo. There we go. There we go. Because occasionally I would be like, I- <laughs> 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 this is like a, like a tone TV yeah. show here. Are you guys done with your semester for teaching at Growing Stage? When's your final class? No, we're doing spring right now. We're, because we're, June we're, we're Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, we do, um, you we guys do go fall. Long. Fall 10 weeks, winter 10 weeks, spring 8. We do 12 weeks. I just finished Saturday. We have another class Saturday, but we're kind of doing like a little celebration. This semester, um, our Saturday classes did their performance at the Morris Museum. Ooh. Yes. And it was so, – what a great space for our kids. It, it was it awesome. It is a great space. It was awesome. So this is Teacher Appreciation Week. Yes. And everyone's – Posting pictures of their teaching artists, and I said to Lori Lawrence, uh, our director of education yeah. at Growing Stage, I was like, "Should we do that?" She was like, "We can." We d- actually, I it was so nice because I logged on to Instagram. I guess it was maybe Monday or Tuesday, or Wednesday, <laughs> one of those days. Or Thursday. And um, Mayo, they yeah, I saw that. they said, you know, we're really grateful for our teaching. You know, our teaching artists at our performing arts school, and I thought that was so that is nice really sweet. because we are a presenting house, um, and our studios are on the second floor. So we definitely know people on the third floor, um, but you know, you really just cross paths because by the time I'm getting to work to teach, a lot of the, our staff members are you know they're getting ready to leave for the day, yeah. or um, our union guys are coming in for a show. So you don't really get a lot of time to you know to be with them so i thought that was so sweet that they they made this really nice collage that is thanking really us sweet. and you know i do it because i love it i love teaching i do um it's hard work it is very hard work and you have to be organized and creative and inspiring and prepared but don't you think the more we do it the better we get oh totally the better we get totally you have your your bag of tricks that yeah. you can just pull out of a bag <laughs> Oh, I would love ad. to do some uh, development training for teaching, I have professional Ooh, development fun. training. I would love to do some acting classes for adults. Me too, and dance. I'm dying for an adult dance class. I love dancing. But I you dance. Want, no, you want to take the class? Yeah. I want to offer. I want to teach the class. Oh, I would take a class with you for sure. Yeah, like I want to do – I want to teach like adults. I would totally do that. I would teach adults. I actually um, – And, cause, and I want to actually – talk about that. And I want to apply – the stuff that I'm doing with kids to adults right. because I think you can absolutely and just see, I feel like it, it could really, it could take off. So I agree. Maybe I should just do that. I should just get some friends together and be like, who wants to, yeah, just do who like, who wants to come play kind of like a little, like in like in beta form. See, yes. and I would absolutely improv exercises. Absolutely. absolutely. And it's so Rizanza good to keep, do it. keep up with Kevin. You, know, you want to come play with us? Yeah. Say. Yay. Kevin and I actually, um, I don't know if I work a lot together. Yeah. We you collaborate. Do. Kevin and I, um, we we do. We collaborate. Kevin's hand. His mom calls us uh, Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde because we are. Because they're bad. We're bad, but so good. No, we, we just work. Because um, they like to rob banks. Oh, you yes. know that. Sorry. <laughs> That's what we do on our side. We rob banks. No, he. Um, we just have this. Uh, natural way together we just instantly connected we've known each other for you know from you know from facebook i mean is that how we know everyone is that from how you met media? from facebook we met from facebook really he worked at the mayo he did some shows there we instantly connected and then we got hired together at rhino to do spring awakening and we immediately it was like a marriage of of friendships and we talked how about you oh, oh, i didn't we do I didn't know daily. that, that you mm-hmm. met through Facebook. Yeah, that's how we originally met. Wow. And then we just connected, and the two of us just hit it off so well that we definitely talk every day. Maybe because we're only children. Well, that's the one thing we laughed at. We are both only children. We both had... Oh, here we go extreme, with the only children's n- club. It, no. Um, <laughs> we both had extreme weight loss. Yes. We talk about that, and we both run. So we definitely have a lot in common. Do and, you run uh, together? 
No, because we don't like to run with people. You should run holding hands. That's another reason why we're the same. I don't, I because I've been offered to run with people. I'm like, I, no, I don't do that. Then, like, how does that work? Do you have to like talk? No, I don't to that person talk. while you're running. Yeah. Well, no, I. You know what? I, I signed up for a few five Ks once before, and mm. I I never went. I've yeah. signed up for five Ks, and I paid. And I never show but isn't up. Isn't that different though than running with like a friend? Because I feel like the friend wants to talk. Because well, we you're have like... to go at. I want to go at my pace. Yeah, right. I want to go at my pace. And he might start like for me. I I start out at the gate. I run, and then I stop, and then like I walk a block, and then I run again. But he might do something different. Yeah, that's he a might, great point. You he know, likes I mean? to run in the rain in the middle. I do. Of the night. Oh, I run at night. I do. I run at night. I mean, fine, but in the he rain. He texted me the other yes. day. You will slip and fall. He texted me. He's like, hey. We're at Maxfield coming out, and it was it was raining. I'm like, I'm running. He's like, what? He's like, it's nighttime, and it's raining. In the I'm rain? Like, yeah, it's it like 10.30 at night. It was. I'm- I also feel like if you're going to run with a friend, all of a sudden you're like, ugh, I have to, like, look somewhat decent. Well, not for Kevin. Kevin has definitely seen me. That's the one thing about Kevin. Um, he's seen me at my worst and my best. So That's we a just friend. Have, it is a friend. Right? It is a friend, and we're, we, yeah, we're very tight. But, I, you know, it's so um, – we work very well together. We direct when we di- like when he's music directing and I'm directing. Don't you agree, Kevin? Um, we think the same. Yes, oh, we do. I'm going to take this call. We'll talk and about it. Kevin, I think we met Hello? before Homegrown. You were working Hi. somewhere. Hello? How are I, don't know. You? I want to say you were working at Thank Centenary. You so, I'm so glad that we were able to. I was. Like, weren't really you at the growing? St- you're at the growing stage for how long? So I've been there forever. <laughs> I've been there for. Thirteen so years. You, uh, Thirteen years. Oh uh, yeah, I was at. I was doing YPW. I think that's how. Maybe. Uh, did we think, meet through Facebook? Maybe. Maybe having mutual friends. Oh, I don't know. But I. I well, it is a small world. It is a small world. So. Are we ready for our next guest? We are. So if you're just joining us, this is a busy day here at Chewing the Scenery. We love being busy. Uh, we just spoke uh, earlier. We spoke to Perry Arthur Kroger. Um, who has a show this Saturday, and now we have another guest on the air. Yeah, we have Bill Russell. Hi, Bill. Hi there. Hi, Bill. Thanks How, for joining thank us. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I just want to say we definitely put this interview together last week. We're going back and forth, and I was so excited to make this work because I want to talk to you about your brand new show, which everyone is loving, Unexpected Joy at the York Theater. Um, can you talk a little bit how this show came to be? Because you did books and lyrics. I did the book and lyrics. Uh, I think the main impetus was wanting to write another show with Janet Hood, the mm-hmm. composer. Uh, we have this is our fifth musical in as many decades. <laughs> we don't exactly pump them out, but right. uh, I just love her music so much and, and working with her. So that was the main um, impetus. And also, I was interested in writing a show for women with an all-female cast. I I love writing for and working with women. And um, so I I was interested in that. And I had a friend from high school, um, who I'm still friends with, who uh, was married to this wonderful guy for like 35 years. They raised two boys together. He. I'm still friends with all of them, but she, um, after that 35 years, fell in love with a woman and left him and married her, and that was sort of what sparked this idea. That is amazing. That is amazing. That's such an amazing story. So what is it about, you said you just just love Janet's um, music, but what is it about her that keeps bringing you two back together as well, in in addition to the music? Well, she... uh, She's not, she doesn't. She only writes with me, and it's not uh, typical musical theater music. It's much more grounded in rock, blues, jazz, and pop, uh, which were my major uh, musical influences. More so, really, than the Broadway canon. Though I've come to really appreciate that. Um, so, whenever a project I think is right and she's interested, uh, it's just. Uh, thrilling to work with her and now and when you're working together is it what 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 comes first you know i know you wrote the book and lyrics but i know is i'm it, always is so it some curious lyrics that you have and then she's she's a putting the music to it or is it the music comes first 
You know, oddly enough, most of the composers I, I write with prefer the lyric first, okay. which is not necessarily a standard thing. I told that to Stephen Schwartz once, and he went, well, that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, maybe wrong, Stephen, but that's how we do it. But, you know, he writes both, so he, right. I think, comes up with the musical phrase first and then puts words to it. So, can With you... Janet, it's always uh, she likes the words first. So that's yeah. I guess it just depends on you know the connection and how and you know how you work together. I and I'm always so curious, like you know what comes first, the chicken it's, or the it's egg. It's fascinating to me yeah. because I think for me, if I was to pick, I would think the lyrics right. came first. But it, I mean, it makes sense if you're um, doing both yeah. that the music could you know inspire the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, both Janet and Henry. Um, Feel. They want to know what the character is that, that it comes from the words. So that's why they. I mean, I don't always what, give them a full lyric. I might give right. them a verse and a chorus that right. they set, and then they'll write a musical bridge, or you know, which I'll put words to. So when, it goes back and forth. When was your opening for you had your opening was pretty recent for Unexpected Joy. Yes, it was a week ago today. Wow! Well, happy anniversary, happy birthday, happy, happy anniversary, birthday. happy you're one week old today, and the audience yeah. response has been tremendous. From just tremendous, I mean, people are so taken with it. I'm, I'm really happy. You and for people that are just tuning in, we're talking to Bill Russell. Um, I do want to go back a few years, and I just want to talk a little about Sideshow because you did mention that you like writing about women, and that show is about two women, right? That are yes. conjoined, and mm-hmm. there was a recent revival. Was that two years ago? Uh, was it was actually. It will be four years. Was it October. four years? Oh my gosh! Yeah. I can't. I, you know what? Time on the internet goes by. Yes, it does. So so quickly. So can you just give our listeners a little catalog of the shows that you've done? Because I think they don't. Sometimes you know we don't realize. You know, like we hear a show and then we're like, oh, my gosh, that was Bill Russell or that was. So can you just like, yeah, just give a little. Sure. Well, I have written 14 full length musicals and two one act musicals, and they've all been produced. But the best known ones are Sideshow, Mm -hmm. uh, Pageant, which ran off Broadway uh, very successfully in the early 90s and was revived in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um. Elegies for Angels, Punks, and Raging Queens, which I also love has music. <laughs> <laughs> that also has music by Janet Hood, the composer of Unexpected Joy, mm-hmm. and that gets done uh, around the world, but more so in England and Europe than it does in America because it had a higher commercial profile in England. I directed a production in the Fringe that moved to the West End, and Sting's wife was in it, and because of all that, it's it's better known over there, and gets the drama schools in England do it all the time, because it's got lots of roles, and it's written in verse, and so, um, that, and then uh, The Last Smoker in America, which was off Broadway a couple years ago, uh, those are my best known ones, I would say. Yeah. And I'm I'm also reading here that you um wrote the uh lyrics and book to a musical uh a, a children's uh musical Lucky Duck that premiered oh, Lucky at, Duck. at yes, New Victory that, Theater. Mm-hmm. That's the other one that gets done quite a lot. Um <clears throat> yes, that was it really we didn't write it as a children's musical, uh, although it's 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 our crazy idea uh, of the Ugly Duckling story. Mm-hmm. Where and the characters are all animals, and when she she runs away to New Duck City, and when she transforms into a swan, she becomes the hottest supermodel in the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't really write it for kids. I mean, we uh, but um, uh, children have always loved it. And uh, in 2010, the Coterie, which is a well-known theater mm-hmm. for young people in Kansas City, yes, yep. commissioned us to a adapted for children, and uh, then that production came to uh, the new victory on okay. 42nd Street. That's great. Wow. Amazing, amazing career. Um, and and you you keep on, you know, you keep on creating. And I'm always so curious, because from the writer, the book, the lyricist standpoint, are do you already have another show cooking in your head? 
Uh, well, I'm I'm writing lyrics for a musical version of Brave New World, oh. Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, oh. and. Uh, you know, my whole career, I have always wanted to do a project where I just wrote lyrics. Right. I really started writing books because it was a way to get <laughs> the songs out there. Yeah. And uh, so this is my first opportunity to just write lyrics, and I love that. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Yeah, so that's uh, that's coming along. And uh, I've been doing a lot of directing, uh, actually, which I enjoy a lot, uh, often my own shows, but not exclusively right and so you, and you do enjoy doing that too it, it like oh very much yeah, yeah. getting down to the nitty-gritty the character work even the blocking yeah. you know where yeah. they, you know right i don't typically do the first productions of my own shows because uh if there are rewrites needed i don't want to have to be thinking about what the lights are doing you know <laughs> right. focus yeah. on my job although elegies i did direct i have directed it from the beginning now that's just such a personal um piece to me that i've always have always done it but um yeah i don't typically do with them originally but then i love exploring them with new actors and other situations um that's really fun yeah, and that must be great for the actors, too. It's like, what's the playwright thinking? Well, yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, yeah. sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. It isn't because I know when the, they're doing the lines wrong. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh, the pressure about for those that. actors. <laughs> oh, that's so great. So we're going to go back to Unexpected Joy. Can you give our listeners, can you give, um, who's in the cast? I know Luba Mason. Luba Mason plays Joy, mm-hmm. who, um, is very well known as half of a successful songwriting performing duo and the show is framed by a concert for her songwriting partner and life partner who was known as jump they were called jump and joy and uh... he's died a year previous to the events in the show and she's put together this memorial concert and invited her daughter Rachel, who lives in Oklahoma and rebelled against her parents' hippie, musician, bohemian high, uh, lifestyle. And they were never married, even though they had the daughter. And so she rebelled and married a televangelist on whose show she performs regularly. So she's a singer, too, but very different style than her mother. And then she has a daughter who's just graduated from high school, played by um, Celeste Rose. Rachel's played by Courtney Ballon. And the daughter, Tamara, is secretly writing her own songs, which are kind of hard rock uh, pieces that she knows her parents would not approve of. And what Joy hasn't told them is that so, since so many friends and, and they're coming for this concert, the next day she's planning to marry her new girlfriend, who is a blues singer. And, of course, um, the idea of her mother getting married at all, but let alone to a woman, uh, really <laughs> freaks out Rachel. <laughs> wow, even in this day and age. Uh, yeah, right? You, you know, you would, but that's fantastic. Well, you know, I, I, when we started this quite a long, when we started talking about this show, <clears throat> the only state that allowed gay marriage was Massachusetts. Mm. And over the years, I mean, we did push it to the back burner several times uh, over the development. But in 2015, when uh, equal marriage became the law of the land, I thought, well, this show is now completely out of date. Yeah. But just because a law is passed doesn't mean attitudes right, change exactly. and especially in families uh so for now with um times up and me too and all of that this show feels more more timely than ever so yeah. right yeah yeah so and this was originally um scheduled to run through may 20th but it will continue an additional week which is great right. um and it's playing at york theater company at st peter's so um Right. How, how exciting for you. Um, so now, when you when you create a new show, how many times do you see it? Are you there every performance, yeah. or do you need to just, you know, step it's back. opening night and step back <clears throat> and just let it? What's well, that like? I go to all the previews because right. we're still making changes. Right. 
And uh, then I, jo- I don't go every night by any means, every performance after we open, but I do have a lot of people coming in to see it, mm-hmm. and I want to be there to at least say hello afterwards right, so, right. and maybe have a drink. That's part of the reason why I love this is getting to catch up with people who I don't see, who I love but don't see all that often. So, yeah, I, I, I go a few times a week. You know, that, I, that is the joy. Uh, Danny and I do theater, too, but we do it on the New Jersey regional level. And right. I, I always say we are, and Bill, you included, the lucky ones because our work is so creative and so fulfilling, but it's also very social, too. Yeah. And it, oh, yeah. And it does bring the arts and theater brings people together. Right. And writing can be very solitary, oh, but yeah. performing, you know, doing the production is not at all. Right. So that sort of uh, makes up for that. Have you, are, are you an actor? Have you been on stage? Cause, so now I want to go back in time. <laughs> when did you, uh, you know, so we circle back to Unexpected Joy. Um, uh-huh. How did you get started in theater and music? Uh, did you start as an actor? Where did this start for you? And would you ever imagine that you would have a you know, Broadway show? Well, you know, I grew up in Spearfish, South Dakota, which is not, wow. not a hotbed of theatrical no. activity. <laughs> um, and my my paternal grandparents were cattle ranchers over the oh border in Wyoming, mm-hmm. uh, and everybody called my father cowboy, and he was a cowboy. I mean, he rode in rodeos and all of that stuff that I had no interest in at yeah. all. Uh, but I had these... I, somehow I got bitten by a theater bug at a very early age. Like when I was in second grade, I wrote and produced a production of Cinderella starring all my friends. And, you know, kids do that. But I think what was different about me is I talked every teacher in the elementary school into letting out class to see my show. Mm. And they did. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then I thought I was going to be an actor uh, uh, when I went to school college, but I soon realized I was much more interested in writing and directing. Right. Uh, but I was a real ham in high school and college, and then working closely with a lot of performers, which I've done over the years, um, I just started seeing what they went through, and I went through a short period of stage fright that lasted about 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> where I just did not want to get up on the stage in front of people, but now I'm once again comfortable with that. So can we expect to see Bill Russell in a show anytime soon? You know, I do a lot of uh, evenings where I host performers performing my songs, and I'm the onstage host. I've done several of those at uh, 54 Below. So I love doing that. Um, I... Well, if somebody asked me to do a role, I might. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, why not? Right? The right role comes around. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so if we wanted to get more information about you, where could our listeners go to get more info about you? <clears throat> well, my website is billrussell.net. Mm-hmm. Bill Russell, all one word. And and can they find you on the social you Are you, are you on the social medias, <laughs> Twitter, Facebook? Oh, yeah, Facebook. I'm not on Twitter, but I am on Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Oh, great. Oh, perfect. What's and your Instagram handle? It's Bill Russell. Um, oh, boy. What it's is Bill it? Russell because I've <laughs> – Bill, I've been tagging you for two days. So it's Bill, it's Bill Russell. <laughs> oh, you've got that? Okay. Uh, yeah, I there follow you. you. I, defi- I definitely follow you. So is there uh, any uh, – is there anything else you want to tell us about this wonderful piece of theater that you have up and going uh, at the York Theater? So exciting. Uh, audiences are loving it that you had to extend it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, exciting. that's incredible. Yeah. Anything else you want to fill us in on? I do want to just mention that we are recording the album. Yes, on that's what I was going to Monday. ask. Oh, yes. Yeah. And How I'm exciting. So, so happy about that because yeah. I think this score is just extraordinary and people are responding to it so positively. So um, that makes me incredibly happy. And we do have a London production coming up in September of the show. Oh, and what the, do you know? Do you, do you have a theater in place yet? Or Yes, yes. It's at the Suffolk Playhouse, which is spelled S-O-U-T-H South Wark, W-A-R-K. Oh. But all those Brits, they pronounce it Suffolk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that is – That's uh, really exciting. I have to tell you, I am excited about A Brave New World because that brings me back to my high school years. And yes. we're kind of living in a brave new world. Oh, yeah. So how timely. Yes, we are. Yes. yes. Well, that could be coming your way very soon. Uh, yeah. Uh, so keep an eye out. Oh, I <laughs> definitely will. So you can go to BillRussell.net to get all your information about Bill Russell. You can find him on Facebook and Instagram. Follow him there. But you should definitely reserve tickets for Unexpected Joy, which has just been extended to May 27th. Yeah, you can go to uh, YorkTheater.org, theater, R-E, dot org for ticket information. Bill, I love your story. I want you to write a musical about your you. family being cowboys. <laughs> I think people would totally eat that up. I would. I know. It's quite – well, I'm mean, actually – there's someone directing um, Oklahoma in South Dakota – at, uh, it's the one professional theater there uh, called the Black Hills Playhouse. It's uh-huh. a summer theater. And I saw a lot of shows growing up there, so it's really fun to go back and work there. I bet. I bet. I bet. Yeah, that's great. Bill, this was so wonderful. Thank you so much. I know we threw this together literally last week. We really, really did. And I'm so glad we were able to accommodate you and get you in earlier. So you, uh, Because, you know, you still have two weeks left, and we want to try and get people in the audience. But you better get your tickets because people are going. And I'm excited about a yeah. cast recording. I know. That's exciting. And you know what's exciting? Because um, I'm a rock girl. I, you know, I, I teach musical theater. Danny does musicals. But deep down, I love rock and blues and jazz. So I love uh-huh. this whole idea idea um you know that this record is not and i love broadway so i'm not putting down broadway but it has yeah right right it has a little like grit to it yeah oh definitely it's it's got a groove this music just grooves you know so i i really look forward to you hearing it oh and i yes i will and do you know when do you think the release date will be or is it too early to uh, it's going to be midsummer. Okay. Oh, that's that's great. That yeah. is great. It, that... They definitely want to have it uh, released before London, which yeah, starts September fifth. So yeah. Oh, and and then you go to the studio too, right? Like you'll be there the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is which is. Oh, I love that part of it. Yeah. I bet. That's. that's <clears throat> so wait, I have do you to make sure the lyrics are right? <laughs> I was going to say, I know, no pressure, Luba Mason, yeah, but no, no paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> no paraphrasing. Right? No paraphrasing. Bill, this was excellent. Yes. I am so glad. Um, BillRussell.net, Facebook, Instagram, Bill Russell. Keep your ears out for the cast recording mid july and for all our friends in london town unexpected joy coming is coming at you yeah. in the meantime go to york org for ticket info yeah. check out that show now playing through may 27th, 27th. thank you so, thank much, you so bill, much bill for joining us today thank you for having me great great talking with you you too you and too. we'll definitely we'll you know we'll keep in touch for sure great thanks bill thank have a great so day take care you too right. thanks again right. bye all right. I loved – you know what? I get – can you see how excited we, I get? Yeah, we're smiling. I'm and like, you, know what? And we you can't say, see. And, and I noticed too, I kept, we say exciting or excited a lot. I know. That's exciting. That's excited. I was like, because we are really excited. Because we're excited. <laughs> if, you, if you're listening and you're not watching on the Facebook Live, we are actually smiling and I, yeah. my body language no, it's, changes. It's, it's so funny though because um, we're literally looking at ourselves. Yeah, we're watching is, ourselves. Which is, is challenging people to look at yourself the whole time. And – and when we're really into the interview, we're like this the whole time. I know, time. smiling. I'm like because there's a lot of interviews. We're like this. We're like not a lot of interviews. No, oh my no, God, that no, awful no. To no say. We have great. No, interviews, no, we but... we love all of our interviews. No, we do. Wow, well, I was no. like, <laughs> I was like, what, what do you say there? <laughs> no, but a lot of times we're just listening. And we're just like, but this one we were really engaged. And we engaged. were very. Thank you. And you know Thank what, you, Bill? Kevin, for what the word. A, I mean, and <laughs> Bill, what? Uh, I mean, I would watch a musical about Bill Russell. How I mean, South Dakota. It was funny though because when he was saying, "Oh, I'm from," I was waiting for him to say New Jersey. Yeah. And then he says South Dakota. I was like, "Whoa!" And he's like, "My dad was a cowboy." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Let's talk a little bit more about." I would absolutely. I'm wearing a vest. See, because he's a cowboy. Yes. <laughs> we, well, we're dressed up. Well, he is because we're supposed to do a photo shoot today. But these, I, I'm just, I can't. It's fine. It's fine. Um. So yeah, we are going to. Get out of here. It was a great day on the air. <gasps> Perry Busy Kroger, uh, Chester, Saturday night, the 6 hive. 8, The Hive. Next to ShopRite. Next to ShopRite. Danny Albert. Go Put buy some car. 
And Unexpected Joy, the York Theater, extended to May 27th. Exciting. May, uh, Yorktheater.org. Dot org to get your tickets. And uh, next week, Greg Allen, author, will be joining us on air. He'll be here in studio, which is always so much fun. It is really fun to have people here. A shout out to producer engineer Kevin Lynch, yes. who's really. Give us a wave, Kevin. Give us a wave. We have some big things coming. Oh. Uh, some changes, nothing major, but we're looking at other platforms to get our voices heard. And Kevin's been a really big influencer. We're getting new haircuts. In that, yeah. I'm gonna so. I'm gonna grow out my hair. We're gonna rip. I'm gonna rip yes. her hair off and put it on my head. There you go. Madagascar <laughs> Women's yes, Theater. Yes, Madagascar com- I mean, is this weekend. Growing stage. Our Mother's Beef Affair, Women's Theater, New Jersey Theater Lines.org. Check out all the theaters. <laughs> That'd be funny. Madagascar at the Women's Theater. Our, our Mother's, Mother's Beef, Beef Affair, Affair at the Growing Stage. stage. <laughs> That's crazy. Can you tell I'm tired? My brain oh. is literally right now in memorization mode. Mm-hmm. Memorization, memorization. When I have a free moment, I have my script open and What's I'm What's your saying, favorite line? Oh my gosh. Can you say it? No, I don't want to ruin anything. I mean, does it say like my mother? I no. Know. I, you know what? It's an issue because I have a lot of monologues. Okay. And then I have a lot of interjections. Um, I have – there's like there's like some scenes that I like. I love the scenes with my twin brother. And I'm not – I don't have a sibling. Like I mentioned earlier, um, Kevin and I are both only children. So it's fun kind of exploring this – not only a sibling but a twin because yeah. as Barbara explained it, she said, you two have been together since that first moment, the moment of inception. So uh, – Scott Tom Jack, who's a great actor, uh, and I are 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 really working on places where we can connect with each other, or uh, are, are we feeling the same way? Because you know, it's not just memorizing lines when you're on stage, and we have to listen. No, you, need to, you want the audience to believe that you're really siblings. Yeah, so that's been um, a lot of fun. What's your hardest line? Um, so one I, line that you just keep tripping up uh, on. I yeah, I hate to even say it out loud. I you know, I hate to say whispered in my ear. I, I I would, but I can't remember it. So <laughs> I do that with my students. Whenever I'm like, okay, so what's your hardest line? And then I have them practice saying it. Yeah. I mean, it's usually what's your hardest line to remember to say. Mm-hmm. Um, usually the words are kind of tripping them up yeah. diction wise or anything like that. Well, so. and that's funny too, because sometimes I have words uh, like competence. I never say that in real life. So when I say it, I'm like, does this sound weird? I'm like, am I saying this? And they're like, no, you're saying it fine. Mm-hmm. I'm like, competence. But I never competence. say competence. See, now that you're saying it, it doesn't sound like a real word. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're, but you're I, totally psyching yourself out. I am. I am. And I have to stop. So Welcome I said I cannot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've been really good about being really positive, you know, with the vibrations and putting out good things. And we are, we really have such a great cast. Meredith Johnson as Anna, uh, Tate Rupert. If you saw Accomplice at the Bigford, he was in that. He's playing Abe, who is our father and the lover. Scott Tom, Jack as Seth. I'm playing Abby. So it's a four person ensemble and we're on stage the whole time. So it's a lot of listening. And if Barbara didn't think you could do it, she wouldn't have given you the part. No, and Barbara is what I want to say. Patricia Durante calls the actor whisperer. She really is a great director, and she's really able to get things out of you and explain things to you to get you where you need to be. So shout out I'm to Barbara, to too. It. Yeah. It's a very different role from Alexandra, who I played last year. So it's a lot of fun. Lots of um, reveals, lots of funny funny moments and poignant moments and sad moments. And um, it's about real life. So you get to follow around this this family. It's great. So next week we'll be back with uh, Greg Allen. He'll be live in studio. Until then, Peace, go see something. Love and all. And theater. Good stuff.